Welcome to Potation Rotation. Um, I just thought I'd do something kind of dumb. Well, it might be dumb. Some of you might be interested in it, some of you might not be, but if you watch any of our uh, uploads, any of our videos, you'll see that in some of them I vape. All right, I'm a, I used to smoke. I kicked the habit with the vaping. Um, it's been years since I've had a cigarette. Um, it is so far better okay uh i immediately had some positive effects from switching um of course we still don't know the long-term negative effects but i am slowing down i am trying to cut back but i thought i would share uh a build um i used to do um my decks used to be uh where i would I actually build actual coils, like Clapton coils, for example, they're called, uh, where you take take an actual wire and you have to build the wire into the into a coil. Uh, and there was, you know, I've got tools in my kit for doing such things. Uh, I don't uh, do that anymore. So yeah, I got this thing called the Coil Master that helped to actually wrap the coil uh, different different thicknesses and shit like that but I got like a whole kit that I used I only use like a few things out of there now because I do mesh but you still have to build it it's not like it's a disposable so uh, it's a little bit easier uh, but there's like an art form to it so uh, I've got this right here this is a, a, a dove pole top side and dual it's got two batteries so uh, on here I've got uh, the profile and I'm going to take that off and I never thought I'd be doing one of these but there's a special circumstance today as to why I would be doing this so I'm going to crank the wattage down to about 25 that's gonna be my build wattage and then I'm usually I'm pretty pretty good at not pressing the fire button while I'm doing this so I mean I've been doing it for the coil the uh, mesh coils I've been doing I don't know well over a year now at this point so then just get that off of there I already actually cleaned um, underneath and everything. So I'm gonna take another paper towel here and I'm not using for my garbage. I just kind of like get in there like that. And make sure that the, these are open. Mm. This camera's not good at autofocusing. But anyway, to hold the coil. So uh, in this deck, in the profile um, version one, I think, uh, or something like that it's called. It's been a, I used to always buy mods and decks like crazy. Um, but since buying uh, the dual, topside dual in uh, this, this profile, this is like the first profile for, for mesh, so it's the first one. Uh, I use the off next mesh. Uh, they kind of go hand in hand, these two together. So, and what I will do is, usually they just stick to my finger. Like that, that's how I get that out. So it's like one of the thinner strips. And then, uh, this is actually perfect for this I just go ahead and put this right in the middle at the like most indented point of the screwdriver and I just kind of like go like this so that it's bent arched curved and this is closing again so just pop that open and then drop it right in there okay now it's already starting to read it but it's not quite ready yet, so 
You gotta make sure it's nice and even. And then hold it down while screwing the screws back in. And then I eyeball it. And it's, it's even, it's nice and straight. And I tighten it up. And as of right now, uh, it's supposed to be, uh, I think it's supposed to be 13. Yeah, 13 ohms. This camera fucking sucks for autofocusing. Anyway, it's supposed to be 13 ohm. God damn this camera. All right. So now it's in there. And now I got to kind of burn all the impurities off there. So I'll just pulse this. You can see that it should be. Oh, I ended up clicking too, too fast because now the fire button's locked. Okay, unlocked. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll pulse, pulse it until there's like a nice even glow. 14 is usually a reading I get. I, it's never spot on. It's never 13, but that's fine. It should be, it can be one or two off. Okay, so that one now will sit. Now I'll grab the dyadic. And this is... Uh, this is another profile on top of here, but it's the second profile, maybe like the 1.5 or something it might be called. I don't know, something like that. But it's got, it allows for a wider mesh. Um, so I'll clean that out. And I did not, though, however, clean this, actually. So get that back on here just to unscrew this. Oh, I did clean it. What I didn't clean was this. For, for whatever odd reason, it leaks on the inside. This is my second dyadic. The first one had some issues with the screen and started to crack on the inside after just a few months. So they sent me a replacement. But both of them leak right down here. And I have yet to understand why it does that or how it even does it. All right, so that's clean. So we're gonna put that back on there, take that off. Same deal as the last one. We're gonna unscrew this. Going to get that out of there. Now, because this allows for a wider mesh, we gotta use a thicker gauge cotton. And just soak that up. Now, I've been having some other problems with this one too. Um, lately in that it's been popping a lot of juice or what we call spit back pops um, right into the mouth um, and I'm not sure why because I this this seems to be in good shape spring seems to be good um, point is you want in mesh building mesh and using mesh you need enough cotton to press up against the mesh coil so this seems fine I don't think I have to adjust that um, this is turned off this one's turned off get this off of here for a second I could See if it needs to be tightened from the bottom, which requires one of these like little wrench things. I'm not good with tool names. Let's see if that, well, it's pretty tight and the screw just fell out. I gotta watch that. These screws are easy to lose. I made it too loose. I mean, it's pretty tight. And that just came off. One of the one of the sides here. That I'm usually careful enough that, that that's never happened before. So I mean it's 
I don't know. I thought maybe that the um, it wasn't pressing up against the cotton wasn't pressing up against the, the coil. It, it seem, seems to work for a while. And then after about a few days, that's when the spit back, the popping happens. I'm drinking monster coffee. Java monster. Because it's the morning. It's not time to drink yet. I know. It's five o'clock somewhere. So anyway, so for this, I use uh, the Watofo uh, Next Mesh Extreme A1, which is supposed to read out at 16 ohms. Um, these are wider than the other ones, and and it's very, it's less wiry. It's it is like literally like a like a mesh. It's very easily it it, it bends so easily that um, that when I shape it. It's very easy for it to just bend back and revert back to its uh, original form. It's it's almost like a, it almost feels like a a blanket or something. It's really hard to explain. So anyway, so uh, this is a little bit thicker. So actually, what I do is instead of using that lowest point, I'll bend it right around where it starts coming back out. And then I gotta kinda hold it because like I said, it'll bounce back. And then I'll drop it in. Okay, so now it's in and this one you really have to hold on to. Plus because it, it seemed, it's so, so easy to retain, try to go back to its original shape. It's also hard to get it even. So I kinda hold it on both sides Try to hold it in place. This is where it gets tricky. Kind of work from the other side so that you don't hold it. And I you just gotta tighten these so that it just doesn't go anywhere. Okay. So now I'm gonna eye it up and it's crooked. It's coming up on this side. So what I'm gonna do is from over here, just slightly loosen each side. I'm going to try to see now it just popped out. These ones are a pain in the ass. So it popped out of one. Yeah, it popped out of the other one too. Okay, so let's try this again. Now it's in there and it's popping back out. Now it's in there. These, these, this type, the A1s, um, I wasn't using the A1s before, and I decided to use the A1s um, because they're supposed to have a better flavor profile on the juice. They're just harder to work with. Okay, so I got that tightened up, and it's still not even. It's Now it's higher on the other side. So do this again. So it seems to be that it's, for whatever fucked up reason, it's riding high as I screw it in. Okay, so now it's even, but I lost a little bit of the curve. So, but that can be easily fixed. So what we'll do is, I'll actually just take this a little bit here Kind of lightly, what I'm doing is I'm lightly pressing into the inside of it. All right, that'll do. All right, so now I'm gonna turn it on, turn the wattage down, turn it down to 25. That and then burn it. Nice even glow. Okay, now that this one's cooled off, I use cotton threads. And of course, these are for, you know, each one of these would be for a regular coil. Um, just thread it through each coil if you're using like a dual coil. Use one of these, but 
uh, because of mesh coil and it's only one thread but it's a huge thread I actually triple these up I have experimented I have used two I've used four two is not good enough four is a little too much a little overboard don't need don't need four so three has been working out for me just fine so I'll go ahead and thread that in there like so take my scissors and from the edge of the deck I will cut it on an angle now I need to fluff this thing so I will take tweezers and I just fluff each end fluff it out fluff it out some people don't do this that's fine um, I find that uh, in the wicking process when you're uh, for me using the squat to, to put the juice up in, in, in there that um, it works better it saturates better so alright so this is good uh, I don't need it it doesn't look like I need to trim it anymore so that's good so now I actually go back to the screwdriver and what I want to do is on each side I want to start tucking it in into the deck starting from the bottom and then once I get the bottom in on one side because sometimes it'll pull I'll start doing the same thing on the other side tuck in the bottom Okay, so now the bottoms are tucked in, so now I got the sides in the top. So now what I'll do is I'll work the sides in to the bottom on one side until I just got the top and flip it around to the other side. I know it's not the best angle, but there's a reason why my camera is in this position for a bigger purpose. Okay, so now I got is the top. So now I will start folding the tops down on both sides and then just work one side in and work the other side in now sometimes what happens is this, now now this was good enough for what I just did but then sometimes it gets to the point where it's kind of pulling a little bit more so then I'll take the tweezers and I'll just take one part of the tweezers and just do like a final tuck. Now a lot of people are all like, you know, you touch the cotton, cotton you shouldn't touch it anymore because you get like crap on from your fingers, oils and stuff on the cotton. Um, you know what? You get vape juice on the cotton. Your finger oils aren't going to matter. So now I just take my finger. Get it like that. So now that that's set, uh, in this one, because it's a top fill, I need to also fill it. I need to clean this. Um, the chunkier bottles, the one mil, 100 mils, um, I use for this one. And the 30 mils I use for the dyadic uh, because it's a side fill so this one is uh, air factory wild apple I'm gonna go ahead and fill the tank up in the bottle whatever you want to call it and this is a bigger bottle than most uh, squawks so it takes a little bit longer and I fill it just until I don't see any space because I don't want to end up flooding it or whatever it's you know overfilling it all right now I saturate I start with each side of the cotton I'm 
I'm not pressing the bottle. I'm not squeezing the bottle. I'm just dabbing and it just comes out and just enough. The other side, it's just like a drop each, each time I go down on the, uh, on the cotton. So like so, okay. Now both sides are saturated from the outside. So now what I'll do is I'll just do the same thing on the coil. Get that nice and covered. And then what I do for this one is I do, now I can tell looking at this that this is, this needs to be tucked a little bit more. There's a little bit more excess here. Okay. Clean that off. So now what I'll do is I'll give it a few just to get it dried up again a little bit and then saturate again. This one doesn't take that much, not as much as the next one, that's for sure. So get it all nice and saturated, a few more presses, and then one more time. Okay, so now it's all done on the outside. I'm gonna go ahead and put that back on. And then I will give it one squeeze so that it saturates from the underside of the cotton. Gets it saturated that way. Now we're gonna go to the dyadic, which is a whole different monster. We use the 60 millimeter uh, or tofu cotton. It's a bigger thread. So get this cleaned up in my case here, stuff that I don't need anymore. So it's, it's about like four of the cotton threads. So, so the, the cotton threads that I use are probably about 45 total this is 60 so now this is this is what I'm saying like I I don't know if it's the cotton not pressing up against the, the coil or not because this is already kind of pain in the ass to get in here every time I do it and when when I do this one I have to hold the mesh down because it might actually pop out because it's so I don't think that's the problem. I don't know what's causing that popping spit back. So, okay, so now I got it started. Now this is the, see, this is the thing. Now it's gonna be so thick that when I try to pull it through, the, the plastic on this side is gonna come right off. And I usually have to use a tweezers to pull it through. So, see, I can't, can't pull it through. The plastic came off. Now I have to use the tweezers the rest of the way. So I don't know what the deal is, but I mean, you can see it's, it is kind of a struggle. It's starting to pull the coil too, this time. It's not, it's not even budging. It can't be. It cannot be an issue with the cotton yet, yeah, because this is snug, man. It's always snug. This is a little bit harder this time than, than usual, but anyway, so same deal. I'm gonna cut it on an angle. And I probably cut a little bit too much on that side, so I'm gonna pull it out a little bit. Okay, that's about even, it looks good. And because this cotton's so thick, uh, when I fluff it, I actually use the scissors to help break it up a little bit more easily because, especially where that uh, plastic piece was on the threading side, um, it's just all a clusterfuck of like glue or something, whatever they use in this. It's going to be hard to show, but... 
So, and this is a little bit more of a bigger fluffing process. So I don't know, I, I wasn't having problems with the spit back. It's only been a recent issue. Um, it's just so weird. And I thought because I, I had a menthol, uh, fruit menthol flavor in here before, that maybe it was a menthol thing, because I don't do menthol very often. Um, and it's hard to tell if I ever do a menthol on here or the other one. It's just, it's, like I said, whatever, the, the bigger bottle goes in the, the, the top side, and uh, I use the smaller bottles for, for this, because it's a side fill, like I said, so. Um, I had a menthol in a smaller bottle, then I have used this. Uh, but like I said, the last time, I ended up like throwing it away too because I was like, well, menthol does not seem to like to work with this uh, larger profile and larger mesh and whatever. So, all right, so it's pretty fluffed out. So, uh, and because of its thickness, it also takes a while to tuck. So, again, start at this bottom, one side. <clears throat> And it's going to be a lot more back and forth because there's a lot more cotton. So I might not get like the whole bottom in one shot, but some people might trim this. Some people are like, oh, it might, it's got to look all nice and pretty and even uh, <clears throat> lines and stuff like that on the cotton. And so, you know what? You're tucking your cotton. Fuck that shit. You're not, you don't need that. You don't need it to look good you're you're tucking it away like you're never gonna see it it doesn't matter i've seen some people do different things i have done different things this is my method for the last you know year plus probably almost going on two years now actually of using it'll be two years i think later this year or something using mesh coils like this, the mesh coil strips. So as you can see, it's taking a little bit longer to tuck. So there's definitely enough cotton. The cotton is definitely pressing up against the coil. So I don't know what's causing that spit back. Okay, so now it's getting to the point where this is no good because it's tip is too thick. The cotton's too thick, they don't like working together, they work against each other, so now I'll just use one side of the tweezers. This one, for supposed, for a, a better vape experience, um, it's kind of a pain in the ass compared to the other deck. Okay, so, pretty much got it tucked in so now I got to just get it there's like these sides here you don't want them really covering the well so that's another uh, negative another drawback of working with this is you need some space on each side and there's just way too much cotton so but it's pretty much done. I'm just like adjusting the cotton inside the well here. Okay, I think that's as good as it's gonna get. So that's that. Now I'll just, like I said, take my finger. It's a little bit more, a little bit more fuzzy shit going on here than normal. almost like it got fluffed too much but it really didn't all right Get that extra cotton crap cotton dust off of there so now this one do I have to fill it can't tell if it's yeah it does need some so so it's a side fill and this is chubby perp it's my all-time favorite. It's my go-to. Uh, not vaping it every time, I'm vaping it every other time. 
I'm going to miss it when I quit. It's not so much, uh, I'm, I don't know, three milligram. I started a lot higher when I quit smoking. It's not the nicotine, I think, at this point that's keeping me. It's being able to do like a flavor of something without it actually being food, <laughs> I think is, I think is my deal. So I overfilled this one. Um, I couldn't tell if it needed to be filled or not. It probably didn't. So kind of spilled out a little bit. That's all right. It's all cleaned up. It's all good. All right. Oops, no, I still need that. This one I'm done with. This one can go in my bag. Okay, so now, um, maybe I need to empty this. It's kind of like coming out of the fill hole. All right, so anyway, um, let's put this back on. Now this one's crooked. Holy Lord. It's really not that difficult. Okay. So it's on. Now this takes a while to get saturated, and I actually have to I actually do each one of these like four times. So it's like it's almost like per uh, millimeter. Um how I decide. So like if the cotton threads are 15 each or something and three of them equal 45 that's three times I do this and then um, I'll do this one four times because it's like four times the thickness of a regular thread okay so that's all saturated only because there's so much more cotton you really got to this one actually also um, has to sit a little bit longer than the other one. Okay, here's number two. I'm doing number three, and I'm dripping. This one I am squeezing a little bit more. I'm giving it tiny little squeezes because um, because I really want to make sure that it gets in there. Saturates it. So here's number three. Now it's already starting to spit a little bit. It's so weird. I don't understand why. Like as I did that last pulse, like little pops were coming off. I'm trying to recall if I only recently started using these A1s. Maybe it's these A1s. So here's number four. Yeah, it's getting to the point where uh, I don't have to squeeze this anymore. It's getting a lot of juice on there. Okay. Yeah, it's weird. It's already kind of working against me here. I don't get it. But we'll find out. True test is when I start really vaping on it. So okay, put that back on. Give it a little bit of a squeeze. You know what? I'm going to see what happens when I squeeze this because I did overfill it a little bit. Okay, it's fine. Nothing came out. Okay. Now, that's done. I don't need that. I can start cleaning up my kit. Now, I'm going to go back to the top side. And starting at 30, I'm going to work my way up to 60 by priming it. So, camera back up here. Do 
three, take it up, take it up a notch as a five, until it gets to the point where anywhere between 30 and 60, if I taste less cotton in the draw, give it one good squeeze. I taste less cotton, because you'll, you'll get like a cotton taste um, and more juice, then I know I can just take it straight up to 60 if it doesn't reach 60 at that point. Give it one good squeeze. So now I'm going up to 45, which is halfway there. I'm only going to take two draws. And I'm not inhaling, I'm just priming, I'm just... It's getting there. I might not have to do 55. One good squeeze. It's ready to go at 60. It helps that it sits a while too. Now the other one hasn't sat as long as this because it took a while to build that one. One good squeeze. Now I'm going to take an actual draw. It's good. It's good to go. Nice and clean and fresh. Now this one didn't sit, sit as long, so it's probably going to need some time. And I'm hoping maybe I'll start at 25. And see, now this is supposed to be uh, 16 ohms, the bigger one. And it always reads at 14, like always. It never reads at 16, never reads at 15, never reads at 17, never at 16. It's always 14 for whatever reason. So, I'm going to start this one at 25, and the battery level just dropped somehow, magically on its own. Give it a good squeeze, but priming it helps it get to a, a faster point where you'll be able to vape it uh, quicker without having to wait longer. Some people don't do this at all. Some people just like, they do it, they get their shit on there, they saturate it, and they crank it up and they just go to town and whatever. But like I said, it's an art. Very strong cotton taste still. This one is also smoking for a while longer than it should. Now I'm at 40. So at this point I'm only going to do two draws. Because I don't want to force this one. I'm going to keep blowing it because it's smoking. Fifty. Is this showing any signs of leaking? Yeah, the, see, there's a little bit coming out. I don't know why that does that at the bottom there. It's so weird. And I tightened it, so I, I don't know. But like, how is it coming out there? It's almost like it it somehow leaks. from underneath the mouthpiece, between the mouthpiece and the, and the tank. I don't know, and the last one did that too, but anyway, 50. See, it's making a popping noise already. 55. You know what? Sixty. I'm going to do two draws on 60, and then I'm going to, I mean, like two without inhaling. See? It shouldn't be fucking popping. I 
like it just like there's nothing wrong with it the build was perfect i wonder if i did just start using these it's tough to tell because i stock up on coils like i'll buy like anywhere between five and ten cases at a time so i don't know if like i just started using these or not but that shouldn't even matter and then I'm at the lowest wattage uh, range that they suggest, so um, I don't know that taking it up is gonna, it's just gonna, I think, be worse because you're using more heat, but uh, whatever. All right, here we go. See what happens. It's all right. So that's it. That's my building a mod. So, two of them. So this one's ready to go. This one has to sit a little bit longer. But, uh, that's it. That's what I do, like, twice a month. And eventually it's going to get to a point where I'm not going to be doing it anymore. Yay for me. Uh, so that'll be it for this odd episode. Uh, if you like the content, um, Click that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And um, give me a comment below if you're a vapor, uh, if you vape, what you use, what your favorite juice is. Um, if you're interested in any of these, I'll have some links below to where you can buy them. And this is going to be the only vaping video I do. So don't ask me for any more. But that's going to be it, guys. I'll see you guys next time.